Hey everybody, welcome back. This is assert arrays equal inside of the testing section of module two. So we're going to write a function called assert arrays equal. It's going to take three parameters just like assert equal, but the actual unexpected parameters are going to be arrays of scalar values, which is to say they're not going to be arrays of objects or arrays of nested arrays. Um, previously, we compared them, the actual and the expected using triple equals. Uh, you're going to find out that you cannot do that. So this section of code actually demonstrates that. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of it, go over to our replet, and this was the one from the previous problem, so we'll just get rid of that. Paste this in here, and it's going to have some problems with what we wrote, why, TypeScript. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but I don't think... Oh, no, there's just an error in here. Okay, so what do we got? Let's get another one. Um, this can't be there. It's got to be a comma. It's got to be that. That's also an error. Well, wow. so there's errors abound with that. So that'll be fixed by the time you guys use it. And if you already used it, sincere apologies. So uh, what's this problem here? TypeScript expected a comma. Yep, because that's, wow, errors all over for this one. Okay, no problem. Um, well, no problem anymore. So once we run these two, you're gonna see two things. Uh, two arrays can be compared or two scalars can be compared with each other using triple equals, true. Um, two arrays can be compared with each other using triple equals, uh, false. So essentially all this is saying is that even though these two arrays are uh, filled with identical contents, and for the purposes of what we're about to do, we would want these to be considered equal. If we compare them directly like this, it's gonna tell us that that's false. Now the reason for that is a little bit com complicated, but if you go to where is it? Notes on memory inside of the reference answers and in-depth documentation. So like it says testing here, there's one later on that says uh, reference answers where there are answers to all these questions and in-depth documentation. And in there has some details about why two arrays compared that way don't work. So we have a success case and a failure case. And again, we're gonna pay, content, uh, pay attention to the exact punctuation and contents of the failure messages. So let's start with these two. We'll move this over here, get rid of that. And then we have our cert arrays equal, which we can get by highlighting like that. And then we have a function that we're gonna write called assert arrays equal. So we'll just copy and paste that. So assert arrays equal. So uh, essentially what we want is we want to be able to check two things. Do they have the same length? Do they have the same values? If same length and same values, log passed, else log failure message. That's essentially what we're up to here. What we can do is instead of comparing them directly, we are going to check all the individual values of both of them against each other. And then similarly, we're gonna check the length to see if they're equal. And then if both of those are equal, they have the same length and the values all match, then we know we have two arrays that are equal. So we're gonna create Boolean variables for this. So we're gonna say same length is equal to, and we're gonna set this equal to an expression, which is just actual.length is equal to expected.length. If either one of these does not have the same length, then this value same length will be false. So we could say that they do not have the same length because same length is equal to false. Same values is gonna be a little bit trickier. We're gonna start by assuming that the values, that they all have the same values. Then we're going to iterate over one of the arrays. It doesn't actually matter which. So variable i is equal to zero. i is less than, let's do expected dot length, i plus plus. And then we're going to check if the current value in expected, so expected at i, if that's ever not equal to the same index in actual, then we know there's a point in the arrays where they don't have the same values. So if that's the case, we're gonna set same values equal to false. And then we're also going to break, which means I want to end this for loop right then. Because once we set same values to false, we don't really care about what else happens during the rest of the iteration. We know that we don't have the same values. So once we do both of those things, now we can come down here and fill out the rest of our if statement. So 
if, and we'll wrap this nice, well, that's going to be kind of awkward to do. I'll leave it the pseudocode down there. We'll say if same values and same length. And this expression will evaluate to true if the, in the event that both of these are true. So if both of them are true, we want to console.log some kind of past message. I think it says past. Let's go back. Console output is past, lowercase. So come back here, make that lowercase. And then else, we have a situation where we're going to console.log this failure message. So let's go back and have a look. It says failed, and then it looks like we have brackets around the test name, and then a space, and then expected. And then we have these around quotes, and then a comma, but got, and then this around quotes. Now, it might not be obvious, but this is actually how most consoles are going to output arrays when you put them in uh, to a, like, it, when you put a, an array into, like, interpolate it into a string and then log it to the console, this is usually what the console output looks like. Just all the values of the array separated by commas. But we're going to mess around with it a little while before we actually submit this time. So failed, there's our bracket, plus, and then we're going to need the test name, plus the other end of the bracket. We're going to tell them that we expected, and then we'll quotes there for now, and if we need to, we can come back and remove them, plus expected, plus beginning of the rest of the string. There's the end of the quotes for expected. There is then, if we look at it, expected a comma right after that, but got, and then a space, and then quotes around the actual value. So those should be what we need. And here is our test case down here calling this. We set expected is equal to broken. Actual is equal to broken dot split. Now, dissimilarly, oh, I wonder if that's a word. Anyway. Unlike the previous problem that we just did, we're not actually going to write a function for this. We're going to assume that this is what's actually coming from the function and that this is what's expected. And it's mostly going to be for demonstrative purposes. So uh, let's get rid of this and have a look at the whole thing. So same length, same values. If the values are ever not equal to each other, then we break after setting same values equal to false. Check if both these are true. If they are passed, if not, this failure message. So on line 27, we're calling assert raise equal with this actual unexpected value. So this should say passed when we run it. And it does. So let's break it as it were. Let's remove that from there and run. And it looks like that's coming out exactly the way that we want with quotes in the right places. So now that that's the case, I'm going to copy this entire function that we've created. We're going to go back to assert raise equal. Paste that function in here. Scroll down, run the tests. They are correct, so excellent work. Um, we'll scroll over to the right just to make sure that it looks all nice. So if somebody's watching, they can pause it and see all the answers. Keep in mind, all of these are going to be in the reference answers section at the end of this, um, this module. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.